This is Blake from Matt Kiteboarding, and today we're going to teach you how to properly trim your kite so that it doesn't backstall. This is a very common mistake among beginners, intermediate, and advanced riders who have never properly learned how to trim the kite. Um, so, little thing here is like the most common misconception with the trim line is that all the way out is full power and pulling it in is deep power. Where that's technically not true. I mean, you do have less power when you pull it all the way in, but um, the kite can be have less power as well when it's let all the way out if it's not trimmed properly. So what this means is that you're adjusting the angle of attack. So it's good to understand for this video what backstalling is. You pull all the way in on the bar and send it down. So we have a few steps for you to simplify this, make it not a problem, and before you go out and you start riding, your kite won't backstall on you and it'll be perfectly trimmed and ready to ride. Step number one is simple. It's just put your kite at the edge of the window after you've launched it, facing pulling you out towards the water so that it doesn't backstall and pull you onto the beach. Step number two is to park your kite at 45, so at either 10 o'clock or two o'clock, and just put your kite there and just have the kite there, just kind of keeping it ready to trim your kite and test out the wind. Step number three is to pull it on your bar and hold it for 10 seconds. And 10 seconds is give or take, the amount of time it takes for your kite to backstall. Sometimes it happens sooner, sometimes it happens maybe 15 seconds later, but 10 seconds is an average we've just come up with. After that amount of time, it's either gonna backstall or it'll be fine and ready to ride. Step number four is to trim your kite a little bit and just test it again. So grab your trim strap, pull it in maybe just this much, about an inch or so, and then just have your kite at 45, pull the bar all the way in, and then see if it starts to fall back down into the wind window. And when it does fall back into the wind window, that's when you push out all the way and it'll shoot back up. So step number five is after you've trimmed your kite a little bit, still, still going, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna trim it another inch until you feel your kite not backstalling into the wind window. So those are the basic five steps into trimming your kite how to have it properly ready to ride. This goes for unhooking. Um, takes maybe less than five minutes, just a couple minutes. You rig your kite, you're ready to go, you're on the beach, just do this. 10 seconds here, 10 seconds there, trimming your kite. Less than a minute, you can have a perfectly trimmed kite so you can fly it, always pulled in, steering it fast without having to sheet out all the time. Uh, sometimes when your kite is overly sheeted, you're gonna have to fly with it sheeted out more. And then when you do send your kite to jump and you pull in, the kite's actually overly um, sheeting your kite. It's gonna swing you under and typically that's what happens when your kite shoots over your head. So that your kite's pulling you too hard and then it pendulums you and swings you underneath your kite. So even if you're doing tricks and you're jumping and everything, a trim kite is very important because you don't want your uh, trim line all the way out where you pull in and it oversheats the kite. Um, that actually holds you back and will make you not jump as high. So I mean, for years and years, I always thought that all the way out was full power. And I always wanted to ride full power. Little did I know that if I would have just trimmed it a little bit, my kite would have actually flown better, more efficiently. It had more lift for me. Um, but also with this is you have to know which knot to put it on. So. Um, as you're rigging your kite, you have usually three options of knots where you can put it for your steering lines. So if you have your knots here, the very last one is the longest length of line. So typically, if you have it on that one, it won't backstall. It'll be the slowest moving of all the knots. The middle knot is the standard knot, which you typically use for most of the time. I mean, if you have the right size kite for the right wind speed, I would mostly recommend just always putting it on the center knot. Usually it flies the best that way and doesn't stall out that much. And then that last knot, the closest to the kite, makes it steer extra fast. And that's if you're really trying to like loop the kite or um, just trying to get a lot of speed out of it. But that's 
the knot where the kite backstalls the most, and you really want to make sure that you properly trim your kite. So every kite is different, every brand is different, some uh, don't give you that option, it's more like based on the wingtip of the kite. So don't stress it too much, uh, your kite and the brand will usually tell you what the best is, and now it's mostly labeled on the kite what the settings are for and how uh, it works. So don't stress too much about this, but that is something to think about. Just go with whatever the brand recommends and usually go for the standard knot. Those are the basics of uh, backstalling and trimming your kite properly. And we hope these helped you guys. And again, we've been writing them all out. We have them on a list for you so you can print them out, take them to the beach with you, have them on your phone or whatever, just so you can have it, see it and visualize it all before you go out for your next session and try this out. So that's about it for this week. Hope you guys enjoy. If you like these videos, give us a thumbs up, comment, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next week.